So, Namaste to all. Welcome to this uh, today's session. Dear Masters, dear friends, dear Gods, my sincere pranams to, sincere thanks to my beloved Guruji, Pramarsi Patriji. Friends, today our topic is, as I posted yesterday in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group, the topic is about vegetarianism and we are also going to detail discuss about Sajjana Sangatya and Swadhyaya. So there are three topics. Of course, it's a little lengthy topic, but we'll try to cover as much as possible within the limited time, what we have. So let's understand. Let's start with the vegetarianism. Okay. What is vegetarianism? What are the benefits? And how it is really beneficial for the human being and environment? Everything we need to study. So we need to know briefly about everything. Friends, before going to the, the topic, I would like to discuss about our PSSM and its objectives. The PSSM is started, as I mentioned, by Dr. Pitamha Brahmarsi Patriji in 1990s. The PSSM has got the, four, the five main pillars of PSSM, I can say. There are five main pillars of PSSM, Pyramid Spiritual Societies Movement. Matar Foundation is part of that. Matar Foundation is conducting this, uh, this particular program, is a part of PSSM under the guidance of, under the divine guidance of Pramarsi Patriji. What are the main pillars of PSSM? The first thing is we have been discussing about meditation and its benefits. That is meditation, breath meditation, anapanasati meditation. That is the first, first and foremost principle. And then comes to the vegetarianism. The second principle of our society is there's a the foundation, there's a pillar, one of the main pillar, vegetarianism. One must be a vegetarian, one must, one must be a sattvah, sattvahari for practicing the spirituality. That's the basic qualification. We, we go and discuss more about that right now. So that's vegetarianism. Second pillar, the third pillar is pyramid, pyramid power. It's called practicing your meditation, doing your sadhana under the pyramid. That is the third pillar. The fourth pillar of PSSM is we are going to practice Swadhyaya. That means reading spiritual books, write spiritual books. So that is called studying more and more about Adhyatmika Shastra. Reading more and more about Adhyatmika Shastra related books. That is called Swadhyaya. We call it as a Swadhyaya. Then the fourth, the fifth principle is Sajjana Sangatya. It means you are, you are spending your time with the Sajjana. That means the people who know the truth, the people who are trying to know, the seeking the truth. So that is the fifth fundamental pillar or the principle of PSSM, my dear friends. So let's go into the details of vegetarianism. Friends, the vegetarianism when we are discussing, we have three perspectives we need to look at this subject. The first perspective is spiritual perspective. Second is the physical perspective, that is prapanchika. Third one is we try to see it with respect to the environment. So these three aspects we must see, we must understand deep about all these three perspectives. So let's go into the spiritual perspective. Try to understand the vegetarian vegetarianism, that means vegetarian food. This is a plant-based food. We are talking about plant-based food. So how does this the help for the spiritual practitioner or the spiritual sadhaka? Try to understand this, the, the vegetarian food is not at all a food for the a spiritual practitioner or the meditator. Okay. So the, the, the reason for is it. So first of all, there is a great saying in Bhagavad Gita. Right. So mamatma sarva bhutatma. Aham Brahmasmi. The first thing we try to understand, Aham Brahmasmi. I am that. You are that. That means you are the soul being. I am the soul being. The similarly, I am that. Aham Brahmasmi means I am that. Try to understand. So then comes to Mamatma Sarva Bhutatma. What is the meaning of Mamatma Sarva Bhutatma? As per Bhagavad Gita, it says that whatever you are, you are everywhere. God is everywhere. The soul is everywhere. Soul consciousness it everywhere in all the life beings, my dear friends. So whenever there is a life, there is a life, there is a soul consciousness in all the all the beings, 
how do you how do you uh, take that animal take uh, cut that life that means you are killing it and uh, eating for yourself when there is a god in every life being all the animals all the plants of course the plants it is there animals it is there so this whole consciousness is existing everywhere that is the meaning of mamatma sarva bhutatma that means god is everywhere soul consciousness is everywhere when there is a soul consciousness within you within other animals animals are also children of the god the whole creation the whole creation is the creation is the children of the god my dear friends it is created by the you call it as a god supreme intelligence purnatma or supreme inter supreme power whatever you call it as one and the same the name is name can be anything but the only one thing is that is the supreme power who is the creator so he has created the entire universe the all the cosmos so when he has created it what happened he has also created the soul consciousness he has created the lot of uh, specks of soul consciousness this whole soul consciousness is pervading in all the life beings my dear friends not only the human human being don't think that the soul is there within the human being only in the human being the soul consciousness exist right from mineral kingdom plant kingdom animal kingdom when there is soul consciousness in you there is soul consciousness in the animals the same soul consciousness exist in the the plants and minerals when there is a soul same soul consciousness exists everywhere it means everybody is same maybe we look different animal look different is a different body we have a different body we have different constitution of the body different organism of the body the animal has different look and feel and different physical structure of the body physically they may be different as i as i told you many times so we this physical body is temporary the soul is permanent the soul is eternal it exist this life here this life after this life after 10 lives 100 lives it go on take the so many births rebirths this is also there this also exist in the animal kingdom also they also take the life they also take physical life with their own life the soul consciousness my dear friends it means when there is a soul consciousness which is same which is one and the same in all the life beings it means you and the animal both are same with in the eyes of god in the eyes of spiritual wisdom if you look at it in the spiritual perspective you both are same it means even if you take a other perspective in the human life you and your children you have, you have given a birth to your children right it means the children is we call, we call them as children is god so in that case your children you never take them take their life for your food isn't it you never take their life for towards your food the food again the non vegetarian food as yesterday mentioned most of the people take the non vegetarian food for this day for the two reasons one is for the taste second is for high protein there are only two reasons i never find any other reasons taking this food okay non vegetarian food so this that uh, the, the reason uh, for taking non vegetarian food i justified yesterday with all the scientific background so we also discussed little bit about that today also so that means so anybody the human being is taking non vegetarian food it has become a, it has become a wrong practice because of we lost our sanatra dharma we there is no teaching at the school level at the lower age when we are child so from the childhood this education must be given the sanatra sanatra dharma must be taught okay because of globalization the modernization we lost all the values all the dharma all the sanatan dharma that is why we landed into the, the wrong practices of food the food practices were quietly wrong and absolutely wrong my dear friends so let's understand as the spiritual perspective i am telling mamatma sarva bhutatma the soul is soul consciousness is everywhere everywhere same in all the animals and uh, plant beings and uh, uh, the human beings so never cut animal never take their life away take their life 
for your taste of uh, tongue and for your food, my dear friends. It is not your food. First of all, understand. Try to understand. It is taking its own birth and it is coming to the earth planet to, uh, to have its own physical experiences, my dear friends. It also comes here. It also lives with the family. It, pro it also produces like you. It gives a reproduction and uh, it has got all the emotions, all the feelings, all the all the vibrations it undergoes. It lead the it lead the life with their family. They also have got children. Every animal got a children. Try to understand. You also got how you got the family life. How you how you got the children? They also lead the life 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 similar to you. So that is the that is the reason we should never harm their life. Okay. If you are harming their life, there is one more thing which I am going to discuss in further classes. That is called law of karma. There is a law of karma. The law of karma gets that will go to catch you. That is going to catch you heavily if you try to resort to any kind of the himsa. That means violent practices for, for killing animals and eating for your food. So the law of karma says what? The cause and effect. So there is a uh, cause and effect. That means for every action, there is an equal amount of reaction, equal and opposite reaction. That means if you do negative karma, you have to undergo the negative experiences, negative results, my dear friends. If you do positive karma, you get positive results, the great results in your life or this life or next life, whatever you do, whether you do in the past life or this life, whatever you do karma, the negative karma, you must undergo the, the great difficulties, all the negative experiences you will face in this life or next life, my dear friends. That is the reason whatever you do, whatever you resort to this uh, violent practices of killing animals for your food, that is a negative karma. We, you must not supposed to do that. You must discard this. So as I told yesterday, so alternative to the non-vegetarian food, we have very much. We will be discussing in the foods. There is a physical perspective of uh, this vegetarianism. I will discuss, I will give more, more details about that. Okay. So right. So so try to understand the great the the great scientists, the, the many great scientists, many great spiritual masters. How quite oftenly spoken about this uh, vegetarianism, my dear friends. The vegetarian food is a suddha sattvika ahara. So uh, try to understand one more thing. Yad bhavam tad, uh, tad bhavati. That means yata mati tata gati. So how your mind gets changed, all your mental feelings, the food will have great impact on your body as well as mind. Try to understand. Whatever the food you take, that is going to impact your mind. Whatever the kind of emotions, whatever the kind of feelings, whatever the kind of thoughts, all this will be in a great, in positive manner, in highly the, the matured manner for the people who uh, take the vegetarian food. So let's take Mahatma Gandhi. So he was a great freedom fighter. He was the father of nation. So he was the pure vegetarian. Okay. So don't think that by birth he is a Gujarati and he is a vegetarian. Don't do not think like that. Okay. He, he is a highly spiritual person. Okay. He always read Bhagavad Gita. And he followed that Bhagavad Gita in daily life. And in Bhagavad Gita, what it said? Mamatva Sarva Bhutatma, Dharma Rakshati Rakshati. That means what? So if you protect Dharma, what is the Dharma? Creating, uh, not giving any violence to any other life being. So that is Dharma. Ahim so Paramo Dharma. So these are the three statements you must remember with respect to spiritual perspective of food, my dear friends. So first is Mamatma Sarva Bhutatma. Aham Brahm, before that, Aham Brahmasmi, Mamatma Sarva Bhutatma, Dharma Rakshati Rakshati, and then Ahimso Paramo Dharmaha. Try to understand. Okay. So if you protect Dharma, it will protect you. It will protect you in all the means, all the means, all the perspective, in all the places, all the time. Dharma will be behind you, with you will be with you. It will protect in all the instances, my dear friends. Dharma Rakshati Rakshati. I am so Paramo Dharmaha. What is the highest dharma in this in this universe? Ahimsa. Ahimsa means what? Non-violence. What is non-violence? Non-violence in the form of physical, physical non-violence, mental non-violence, mental non-violence. All the this is the violence is also two types, either physical or mental. You must not give any kind of violence to any other life beings on this earth planet. So if you don't give any violence to any other life beings, maybe, maybe physical, maybe mental. So sometimes we think that. The violence will be committed in three formats, my dear friends. One is physical, second is verbal, third is mental. Okay. So even if you give a torture to any other life being, including animals, including human beings, including plants, all these things. 
So when you give torture physically, that means you are cutting them, you are heat, beat, heating, uh, beating them, or uh, you are, uh, you know, whatever you are doing, physical torture you are giving. So that physical torture, nothing but physical violence. It comes under physical violence, physical himsa. So that means it is against to the himsa. The opposite word is ahimsa. Okay. So physical violence is to be sent off. So it will be sent out. So we should not resort to the any physical violence or any other life being. Third one is mental violence. What is a mental violence? So mental violence that is you commit by thinking in the negative manner on the other people, regarding other people, regarding other instances, whatever you do, all the negative thinking, all the negative thinking, negative vibrations which you release out of your mind. So they're all called, it comes under the category of mental violence that also you must avoid. Then what is the other one? Verbal, verbal violence. So how do you do the verbal violence? By scolding other people, by using wrong words, by not talking properly. So whatever you need to talk, you must talk. Whatever you should not talk, you should not talk. Whatever you are not supposed to talk, whatever the words you are not supposed to use to hurt other people, to create a violence to other people. So that must be not do that. That must not be done. So that is that it comes under the verbal verbal violence. Whenever you don't need to talk, go into the mauna. Whenever you don't need to have any work, you have no work, you have no nothing to do at any point of time. Go into the mauna, then go into the mauna in the mind. So mauna in the mind is called meditation. The no words and uh, you are not going to talk anything. So that is called bailoni mauna, mansuloni sunya. That is adhesre uh, dhyana. What is dhyana? What is meditation? So emptiness in the mind, emptiness in the mouth, both are set down. So that is called meditation. So whenever you have a leisure time, you know, when, when nothing is uh, to be done, so go into the meditation. Okay. So fine. So this is the perspective of uh, uh, spiritual perspective, my dear friends. So if you see, uh, if you try to um, uh, uh, study the history, right? So many of the great uh, scientists and many of the great, uh, you know, so we, we say that uh, a person is a non-vegetarian, you have a lot of muscles, you have a lot of uh, energy, you think like that. So it gives energy in, only at that instant of time, my dear friends. So what will happen? So because of uh, this food, what are the acidic food, that is a physical perspective will come into. So try to understand there are <clears throat> many, many more uh, uh, spiritual masters, as I told you, Swami Vivekananda, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, and all the great masters, Jesus Christ, and all these are pure vegetarians. They have taught about the, the kind of a karuna, karuna towards all the life beings, my dear friends. This is karuna, the pragna. So what will happen? The other thing is when you do, when you start doing meditation, when you go into the deep practice of meditation, what you achieve is by doing meditation, you are going to get a lot of pragna. Pragna means what? The spiritual wisdom the highest amount of Vijnana. Vijnana means it's a wisdom. So you are going to receive this Vijnana by doing meditation, by doing your, your activation of your third eye and by doing the astral travel, you will understand that you are the same soul consciousness exists everywhere in the universe. So when you understand that particular truth, that's the truth, my dear friends. When you understand that, you never resort to this kind of violence to, towards any other life being on this earth planet, my dear friends. So by being, <clears throat> that is why, hence we suggest you to practice more and more meditation, not 10 minutes, 15 minutes. In the beginning, 10, 15 minutes is okay. But the amount of period of meditation, you must increase to one hour, two hours, three hours, right? Whenever, whatever you are in the night times, in the daytime, you are busy, of course. In the night time, so you have much more time, have a light food in the night, night time. So in the dinner, you should have a very sattvika hara. This 21 days, my dear friends, I am suggesting all of you to be a vegetarian, to be a sattvika hara. Do not take anything in extreme manner. It can be a sore, it can be a, you know, sweet or whatever. Do not take anything in a extreme quantities. In the night time, let's say, at least in the night time, you must have the very light food, suddha sattvika hara. Take uh, if, if possible. So a, a small one uh, sabji and one chapati. Uh, chapati means again, that's a problem. So it should not, the chapati should not be with the wheat. Try to take the roti. The chapati is not good for the health, physical health. So that I will explain later. So try to have one sabji, one curry, it's a sakari or sabji, and with along with the rotis. So that uh, light food is enough for the because the night time your digestion fire will be less. The digestive juices will be less in the stomach. Well, what is the reason for that? Because there is no sun outside. So when there is a sun outside, with respect to the sun, so our jirnasya, the agni, agni, that is fire inside the stomach, right? I told yesterday, so in the previous classes, so you need the proper digestive juices. 
generated secretions happens in your stomach that is more essential more essential in order to digest the food what you take in the night time digest now, now amount of digestive enzymes and juices are less so let's have light food so the light food will help you in greatly towards your sadhana practice of meditation my dear friends so try to do that so then take up your meditation in the night time after the after everybody sleep take up take up the uh, meditation in the night time that's the most suitable and most conducive time to the meditation you take up uh, one hour two hour three hour how much hour possible in start 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 from 30 minutes you go on extend one hour two hour three hours if you do that much then really you will get into the the deep sadhana of meditation deep practice of med meditation that will give you the actual taste of the spirituality spiritual wisdom so called i explain till now so the entire wisdom the entire practical experience of the meditation you can get it my dear friends be the only amount of sadhana if you increase if you increase more and more practice of your meditation then really then you can really understand what is the background of it and what is the the inner depth of uh, the spiritual spirituality and spiritual wisdom my dear friends okay so let's go to the physical perspective of this food friends i'll try to explain the physical what is the physical perspective the physical perspective of this vegetarian food is or non vegetarian food first of all we are the, the, there are the animals are divided into two types herbivorous carnivorous we are the we are the herbivorous animal this the the physical anatomy of the herbivorous animals the physical anatomy of the the structure of the body i'm telling about so we both are different so for herbivorous animal carnivorous animal the all the carnivorous animal they eat non vegetarian food okay it is mutahara mutahara so the all the herbivorous animals they eat the vegetarian food that is sashyahara shakahara shuddha satvik ahara they eat that kind of food so the physical anatomy is different first of all and so the physical anatomy is like this so whatever we have teeth whatever the the digestive part that is a, that is a, the jirna jirna sha jirna kosha that is quite different from the non vegetarian animal so how it is so our tooth will be a little bit you know they are not sharpened first of all in the any herbivorous animal you observe the animal or the human being so both you observe so that means elephant or you can observe the other you know deer or a goat or a sheep sheep and all these things so whatever the animals you you observe that is they are the vegetarian animals what will have their teeth is smaller they are not sharper okay they are not sharp sharp the sharpening is not there so that is why we cannot plug the you know the flesh and eat we cannot uh, you know plug the flesh directly and we, we cannot uh, eat the flesh directly we cannot take the flesh from the body directly but if you observe the non vegetarian animals their uh, teeth are very sharp very lengthy and sharp they plug the flesh and eat directly so that we cannot do anyway so the first of all human being cannot eat the flesh directly my dear friends so you never eat that you cook more you cook very heavily and you add lot of other you know the kind of flavors and then you are eating it to you are making it uh, tasty uh, smell the good smell, the you know the kind of a attractive smell and then you are eating it you never eat directly try to understand so the reason behind is definitely you will not like if i give the flesh directly to your hand you will definitely you will be going out out of away away from that it will you dislike it the reason is it is not your food see if it is if you like it what happen you, whatever you like that means like attracts like the law of, the law of uh, attraction so what law of attraction says like attracts like so what it means you like something which is really a, you, you, your own inner your inner says whether to like it or not dislike it definitely your inner directly says by looking at the flesh as it is you never like it but what we are doing we are so inter, so like you know we are intellectual basically but the human being the mind is so intellectual we do all the metamorphosis metamorphosis that means we uh, we change it we completely transform it into different look and feel and tasty then we eat it so that is why it is not your natural food my dear friends anyway so let's take some more details the non vegetarian food will never have any fiber component the non vegetarian food the non non vegetarian food it never have the kind of vitamin k vitamin c is not never there 
So, and also it doesn't have carbohydrates. Try to understand. Only you are eating for the sake of protein. I explained you the protein is very much available in the pulses and grains, especially groundnuts and that kind of thing. You get the sufficient protein, my dear friends. If you eat millets, so in alternate day, two days once, if you start eating millets instead of white rice, I suggested you instead of white rice and wheat. If you are you start eating eating millets, about millets, we'll explain you later in the class, other classes, right? So you'll get sufficient protein. You don't need to worry about protein at all. Then what, what about other thing? You are worrying about the taste. Friends, lot of vegetable, vegetables are there, lot of plant food, the plant-based food is there. Try to understand, which is very tasty. You can the many, many varieties. The hundreds of varieties are there on this earth planet, which has created which is created by God again. So the God has given so many options. If you, if you start eating, if you start cooking all this vegetarian food in a different, different manner. So definitely you all the taste will be justified. All your tongue taste will be justified. You don't need to resort to any kind of violence towards the animals, my dear friends. The other thing is very important is the plants. If the first of all, the plants has got the highest amount of the consciousness. What are the plants? The plants are the plants are the nature kingdom. Okay. In the nature kingdom, what happened? How the plant prepared the food for himself due to photosynthesis. So it takes sunlight, it takes water. Right. So with that, what it does, it prepares its own food. That means it generates some glucose right inside the uh, plant itself. So after that, what happened? It also produces the food for the human being, food for the animals. So through which what happened in the plant based food, maybe fruit, maybe leaves, maybe stem of the tree. So you get all the kind of what, what, what is so called, what you call it as proteins, vitamins, minerals. All the things you will get in the plants itself, my dear friends. Everything is available. Especially non-vegetarian food has got highest amount of cholesterol. That is the most dangerous part. Okay. The most amount of fat. It's a fat. It's a saturated fat, which is really harmful to the health, my dear friends. What happened? This uh, highest amount of cholesterol, once it goes into the body, it will not be digested properly. I told you, any animal flesh or animal food, that is animal protein. So if you take into your uh, stomach, what will happen? You don't have that kind of uh, the system inside. First of all, try to understand all your uh, liver and kidneys. They are in the small in shape. The small in the physical, 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 the structure itself is small. If a non-vegetarian animal, what happened? The non-vegetarian non carnivorous animals. So the carnivorous animals, these two parts are bigger in size. So what will happen is, and also the large intestine in the non-vegetarian animal, it is very short, okay, large intestine. That is the, the last part of vesergen system. That is excretory system. What is the, the final part? The large intestine, colon. So that is where the food which goes out of, that after the digestion, whatever leftover, whatever the waste, it goes out of that large intestine, it goes up out of your body or your body or animal body, that the final, the part of, the final stage of excretion. So friends, the large intestine, which is the lengthy in all the herbivorous animals, for example, you are the height of, uh, you have a height of uh, four feet, the at least, you know, the four by times of yours, the four by times of your height, that is the length of the large intestine in the herb herbivorous animals. If you take the carnivorous animals, so it's as good as very short, you can say whatever, you know, the height of the animal, so it's similar to that. It is equal to the height of the animal. So that is very short. The large intestine is very short. So then what happened? Whatever the waste comes, immediately will go out. It doesn't stay in the system. It doesn't stay in the physical body. If it if we stay more amount of time in the intestine, what happened? It creates a lot of bad bacteria. It produces highest amount of poisonous gases, my dear friends, which is going to spoil the other organs, other organs in the, inside the body. It, it, it increases the acidity inside your blood system, blood circulation. In the blood flow, a lot of acidity get introduced and because of acidity, what happened? Many of the, the active cells will get died. So because of that, the disease starts inside your body. Try to understand, friends, the very simple aspect. Anytime anybody died in your uh, house, what you do first thing? First thing is you want to take that body as soon as possible. Uh, do you, are you going to keep even your mother, father, your children, who are uh, death takes place in, in a particular house, do you like to keep the body inside your house? 
So you like so much, right? You loved so much. Your own loved ones departed away. Then what happened? Your physical, the physical body lying over there. Now there is no prana. So if there is no prana, what happened? Become shiva. If there is a life inside it, it's a shiva. Prana with physical, physical body with prana, physical body with the soul. That is called shiva. The physical body lost the life, lost the prana. The soul consciousness is lost. Soul consciousness passed away. What happened? You call it as a shiva. So that seva, are you going to keep it uh, any more time in the house? The first thing what you do, you are going to take away the body. Everybody says, take out the body, you have to vacate it, you have to go and do dhana kriya, all the, the lost rights of the person. So why do, you, why, you do, why do you do that? You keep the physical body inside your house. What will happen? It decay. It produces a lot of smell, foul smell. It will come, start coming from the physical body and start generating a lot of uh, liquids through your ears and nose. All this, all this happens. Why it happens? Because there is no prana shakti inside it. There is no electricity in the bulb now. The electricity is withdrawn. The electricity is withdrawn, shut down. So that is why what happens? The inside, all the, you know, whatever the organs, whatever the tissues start getting decomposed. They are getting decayed, my dear friends. So whatever the bacteria, whatever the bacteria which is existing in your system itself start melting down. Entire your, your flesh and your bones and your entire physical body gets melted into the Panchabhutas, it go into the Panchabhutas. So that means what are the point I'm trying to catch here? I'm trying to point or trying to highlight here is you are not supposed to, you are not able to keep that body inside your house. How do you keep the non-medicinal food? You are packing it and bringing it and keeping it in the refrigerator. Is it really is it not the same? Both are same, right? Both are physical bodies, both are dead bodies, both are the flesh and the flesh is same. You have the physical body of you as a gut flesh, bones, all this thing. Same thing, same food you are bringing and keeping in the refrigerator and adding some masalas and keeping it in a you know, non-foul man, non-foul. That means you are not getting foul smell from the from that. You are avoiding it, all these things. But do you think the bad, bad bacteria will not be generated inside it? Friends, try to understand. This is the most important perspective. One must understand. Right? So never do this. Try to avoid all these practices, all these wrong practices of food, my dear friends. So that means you are eating the decayed food, decomposed food with a great amount of negative bacteria, the bad bacteria inside it, you are eating it. You are going and you are going and heating on the uh, your stove or electric or whatever the stove you are eating it, it doesn't go. The bad bacteria will never die. Try to understand. At the other time, other, other perspective I'm trying to explain you. Whenever you kill an animal, what happens? When the animal is died, it died out of the fear, out of the escape. You it want to escape, it want to flee away, and you have catched it and you have uh, you have uh, pulled it and you know tied up, and then you are killing it. What happens? There are many kind of fear thought, fearful thoughts, the kind of emotions, bad emotions, negative emotions, due to which what happens? Let's say so you you get a negative emotion, for example. So then what will happen? You get a lot of, you know, the different kind of a feeling inside your stomach. If you get stressed, for example, then you get a lot of acidity, the kind of a environment in your body, right? In your stomach, you'll feel like a the kind of a, uh, you know, uh, nausea feeling. That is, you feel like uh, vomiting, that kind of, uh, that, uh, that some kind of fear will start inside you. And in your mind, you feel so negative, you feel so, you feel so low energetic, right? So that is the kind of stress situation what you face. Whenever you get a fear, whenever you get a threatening, whenever you get any kind of negative situation you face, your entire reaction, the chemical reactions inside you takes place, my dear friends. So the poisonous and uh, the bad chemicals start generating inside your system, similarly to the animal. When you are killing the animal, when you are resorting to the physical violence against the animal, the same thing happens, my dear friends. It generates a lot of poisonous poisonous chemicals inside its uh, own body when it is dying. The same plus you are bringing it to your house and you are cooking it, those poisonous poisonous, poisonous chemicals will never go out of the flesh. Even you eat uh, by cooking or by doing whatever marpuses you are going to do, it doesn't change. That is why those positive, the poisonous chemicals will go inside your body. It does a lot of harm to you. That's why I told you all the animal protein, all the all the especially the uh, hormones, right? So the animal protein when you take, all the hormones in your body will get imbalanced. 
okay that is why you observe many of the people okay they are suffering today with the many of the, the great number of number of diseases all the side effects right so that is why the animal protein causes the imbalance in the hormones in your own hormones to get imbalance you know in your own the lot of glands are there so endocrine glands all the endocrine glands their own system of operations will be disturbed because of your animal protein because it's a foreign protein it is the only the plant based protein is a natural protein which can be digested in your physical body in the in your stomach my dear friends try to understand so this is the physical perspective my dear friends at the same time the natural the uh, the natural view if you try to understand with respect with respect to consciousness right so plant has got the great consciousness friends what will happen is the plant and an plant animal or the human being there are five elements we are all constructed our body is constructed with the panchabhutas as i explained to you earlier also so the panchabhutas are existing in everywhere so what will happen is if we eat a vegetarian food so vegetarian food that is plant based food you you take your healing or you take food both for both for both the perspective the plant based food or plant based healing that is more suitable for your or your uh, your physical anatomy my dear friends so what will happen they are also made up of panchabhutas i told you yesterday also the disease is caused because of the imbalance of the the panchabhuta that is five elements in our body i explained you as part of mudra therapy try to understand so vayu pitta there is a vayu there is a pitta there is a kapha there are three type of nature of body so all this will be get adjusted by adjusting the panchabhutas and five elements in your body right so for which what happens you take a plant it has got the consciousness it it has got its own consciousness my dear friends so you can even your your consciousness can directly you know communicate with the plant consciousness you know the doctor uh, subhash chandra bose the great scientist of our india so he has invented a system of talking to the communicating to the plants the plant plants have got their own way of communication you can do the communication with them only the only when your consciousness can get connected to the plants consciousness okay when you go into meditation or when you uh, just be in a silent mode and communicate your thoughts through your thoughts through your consciousness you can directly co communicate with the the uh, though the plant has got lower consciousness the human beings have got higher consciousness the other reason why animals should not be eaten for the food is uh, the first of all you need to understand animal is evolved with the consciously conscious their consciousness evolved my dear friends so that's why i told you many people argue why why not uh, killing plants is also a sin or saying that plant plant food also we are cutting them and eating friends try to understand in the plant based food the consciousness consciousness is low at level okay lower level and the animal consciousness and human consciousness evolved consciousness that is one thing other thing is whatever the emotions you got talk about whatever the mind so try to understand there is a mind there is a kind of emotions there are kind of feelings all these are more prevalent in the animal beings instead of plants so what will happen a plant for example you are cutting a particular you know branch or a leaves or the fruits you are taking for your food what happens at the same place one more flower will come and one more fruit will come the stem for example you are cutting the stem stem will again grow will it happen in the animal beings if you are cutting its leg and you are eating for example and it is bleeding bleeding heavily and it is suffering the kind of himsa you are giving a torture to it friends only only one thing you understand when you are eating the animal being it means you are eating the god as as good as you are killing you are killing the god try to understand so why all the scriptures all the vedas four vedas why they spoke about this uh, uh, about ahimsa ahimso parmo dharma in the entire universe ahimsa is the parma dharma my dear friends so that is why try to understand when you are killing animal you are killing the god the god is in you god is in the animal try to understand when you understand this truth you never resort to the violence about uh, against animals for the taste of food for the taste of your tongue my dear friends so let's understand i am trying to you i am trying to explain about the consciousness part in the animals 
in the plant beings, in the human beings. So whatever the consciousness you have, the same consciousness exists everywhere. So what will happen is for your healing, for your food, the best and most suitable part, uh, so suitable part of uh, the food is the plant-based food. Even I'll tell you, many of the diseases you can cure with the plants. They are called herbal medicine, my dear friends. We have herbal medicine. The Ayurveda says, Ayurveda speaks about all these herbal medicine. Of course, the food is also plant-based food and your, your healing or your health, the ill health can be taken care by your plants, many of the plants. Friends, try to understand a cat or a dog. Whenever it is unhealthy, what happens? It goes into the garden, your own garden. It goes into one garden, it goes into the garden. Then it tries to pluck, it tries to pluck some particular you know, plant and eat it. For example, its stomach is got disturbed. What happens? Goes into the garden, it eats some grass, a different kind of grass, but you don't understand. You can't understand. What happened? All this, the human intelligence, the human, something called instinct or intuition is lost because of your polluted mind. Your mind has got, you know, turbulent. Your mind has got completely polluted with the various programming of society. What happened is you lost that natural intelligence, my dear friends. But all the dogs, all the animals have got that instinct that's called natural intelligence they have. They can identify which herb can be suitable for their food at the time of when they are having a ill health. When they are not feeling well, they go and pluck one particular plant and then eat. Then they rectify their problem. They come out of that illness naturally. This same kind of, the same kind of the intelligence within is available within us. Friends, all this herbal medicine, so-called great Ayurveda, came out of came out of what? Came out of our great saints of India, the great sages, saints. Who are the great saints? So there are many great saints who have introduced this uh, Ayurveda to the entire universe, the entire world, my dear friends. First of all, we say Brahma Vidya. Brahma Vidya, Brahma, Brahma Vidya this uh, Ayurveda came, came out, right? Atharva Veda. There is an Atharva Veda. There are four Vedas. Out of that, one Veda, one Veda is called Atharva Veda. This particular Ayurveda came out of that. So there is Bharadvaja Maharshi, Bharadvaja Maharshi, Vagbata Acharya, Susruta Maharshi, Charaka Maharshi. All these great saints of India has given the great amount of wisdom in the form of Ayurveda. We are so fortunate, my dear friends. We are the we are we are born in the India. We are born in the Bharat. What is Bharat means? Tha means elimination. So, Rath means what? It's a knowledge. So, we are, we are, the Bharat means what? Elimination, eliminating with the knowledge, my dear friends. Eliminating, eliminated with the knowledge. That is called Bharat. We are so fortunate. We born in the India. We born in the Bharat. But what happened? We are unfortunate that we are completely, completely occupied with the Western mind, my dear friends. The body is physical body is uh, uh, belongs to the Bharat and our mind belongs to the Western countries. That means Prachatya. So that is our ancient uh, body belongs to the India and our mind belongs to the Western countries. It means the kind of practices, the kind of behavior, the kind of understanding about all your surroundings, all of the all the nature, the completely driven by the so-called the western philosophy that is why we all gone bad and now we have to go back to the nature we have to go back to the roots of uh, india that is sanatana dharma that is ayurveda my dear friends with respect to the food with respect to the body with respect to the mind with respect to the soul ayurveda has described so nicely so nicely having the greater amount of depth of wisdom is given by ayurveda okay so we'll be learning some part of ayurveda in our daily classes right so let's Friends, let's understand, you can communicate to the plant. How do you communicate? That's what I was telling you. So Dr. Subhash Chandra Bose, a great scientist of physical scientist of uh, our India, the Sanatana, so our Bharat. So he has described so nicely and invented and discovered. So how to communicate with the plants? It means you have consciousness. That's why I told you animals will communicate with the plants through their consciousness and they get solutions. The, try to understand when you communicate with the consciousness of a plant with through your consciousness you don't need to talk verbally right you can communicate through your telepathy to your through your consciousness the consciousness generates one thought thought is an energy wave 
So it communicates directly with the lower consciousness of the plants. So that is why what happens. So you can give your problem, particularly I am suffering with so and so problem. Okay. If you give it to the plant, what happens? Plant will communicate back and it gives you the medicine directly there itself. Then and there itself, you can find a medicine for your problem, my dear friends. That is the kind of communication you can establish with all the plant kingdom. It will give you the, the right, right food and it will give you the right uh, medicine, my dear friends. So that is why we should depend on these kind of natural methods instead of resorting to the unnatural methods. Right? So unnatural methods, the today's modern medicine, what you call the modern uh, technology or uh, so-called modern medical systems have gone to the complete wrong practices by introducing the all chemical oriented uh, medicines you know, which are harming the body in a totally in a dangerous manner such a way that you cannot recover. You cannot recover from any kind of the disease or ailment which you are suffering because of, uh, because of your immunity, immunity power especially the immunity which is inside, that is inner, inner doctor. I call it an inner doctor, which is going to be damaged because of the chemical medicines which you are supplying to your body because they are foreign, they, they are the foreign body, they, they are the foreign food, whatever you are taking, all the modern medicine, the chemical medicine is a foreign food which cannot be digested properly, my dear friends. So which cannot be digested properly within your system. What happens when it, can, when it cannot be digested properly, it creates a lot of wastage inside. So when it creates a lot of, lot of wastage, your system go bad, your immunity comes down and you get into many, 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 many other adverse effects of medicine and many, many other, uh, other diseases you get into. And then you finally, you lose your, the precious life, which is gifted by the God, my dear friends. So this is a physical perspective, try to understand. So we have not much carbohydrates. We have no much of a fiber component. We have no much of vitamin C, vitamin K. All these are not existing in the non-vegetarian food. You don't need to eat at all. So go with the pure, pure vegetarian food, sattvic ahara. It gives everything, my dear friends. What not? Everything, whatever you wanted. And the highest damaging part is non-vegetarian food is having the, particularly the cholesterol. Cholesterol, that is saturated fat which is very very bad to the health which cannot be digested at all so try to understand this is a physical perspective so what is the environmental perspective my dear friends with respect to vegetarian food or non-vegetarian food so try to understand the environmental perspective what will happen is if you want to prepare one kg of meat you need 50,000 liters my dear friends so how it is yes, especially i'm telling the entire america if they start uh, stopping this uh, eating non-vegetarian food. I will tell you what, what miracle is going to happen on this earth planet. They use 70% of their natural resources towards feeding of like soya beans and all these things. They grow heavily. They deforested. The entire Amazon forest is gone now. That is, Amazon forest is the heart of this entire earth planet, my dear friends. The more, much of the oxygen comes from there. So do you think that oxygen comes from, comes from you are, you are uh, breathing oxygen the air, what you are thinking, it is coming only here. It's only generated here. No, it is generated a lot of amount of oxygen get generated from the Amazon forest because it, the, this is the heart. This is, a, this, this is the heart of the place of the entire earth planet. If you observe, that is a kind of a lungs. You call it as a, in your body, whichever the lungs are there, which are main part of your respiratory system. In the same way, the respiratory system for our entire earth planet is Amazon forest. So what happened? Their deforestation has been done and they are using the entire place for growing the food for the animals and in turn they are producing, they are going to produce the meat. Try to understand. So friends, if you, if you observe almost in India, so in India itself, we have about 39,000 of slaughterhouses. Slaughterhouses are there about 39,000 in spreading of entire India. So anyway, so when you when you observe the America, especially they grow, they're all using all their natural resources. They grow uh, about, uh, they grow this uh, non-vegetarian food. That means animals they grow by feeding them with the, all this livestock, they're feeding, they are going to feed heavily with their natural resources. They are depleting the natural resources. That is 70% of their, the so-called the, uh, the vegetarian, you know, the, the plantation, what they do, the crops, what they grow, they feed to the non, the, non they feed to the, all this livestock so that they generate the non-vegetarian food. But that's not a good practice. 
So everybody on this earth planet, many of the human beings are suffering with the shortage of food, my dear friends. If they stop producing the 70% of their vegetarian food to feed to the livestock and in turn they are eating the non-vegetarian food. I explained it so much now with a spiritual perspective, physical perspective. So it is, which is such a kind of dangerous food what you are going to take. So how come you are going to eat you know, by making this non-vegetarian food from the livestock? You are uh, you are you are uh, making the non-vegetarian food from the livestock, from the all the animals, and by spending the the costly and precious natural resources, so you are depleting the food for other human beings also. So it means what happened? You can feed. I can tell you uh, the water. How much of water you are going to use? The water you are going to feed for the animal for the sake of non-vegetarian food, fifty thousand liters one one kg of meat. Try to understand. The same 50,000 liters, you can feed your entire family for one month, my dear friends. For one month, you, more than one month, I'm telling you, more than, it's a, an average 500 liters you take, 500 liters or 1,000 liters you take, if it is in a heavy, more consumption of water for a family, you are going to really spend about one and a half month water for one family that you are giving to one animal to prepare one kg of meat. Try to understand. So such a kind of damaging you are doing to the environment. And when you do the damaging to the environment, what happens? Dharma rakshati rakshati ha. That means you are doing adharma to the nature, adharma to the environment. What will happen? It will also give you, it all it, 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 it hits back, the law of karma comes back and it hits you badly. The, all the kind of calamities, all the kind of floods are happening. The nature is not, uh, nature imbalance, the nature imbalance is created. The nature is resorting to the kind of uh, calamities and floods and uh, in the different formats, it is killing the, 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 all the kind of different kind of life on the earth planet, my dear friends. So this is the law of karma. This is the adharma. So you are doing adharma to the nature. So definitely adharma will come back to you. So that's why, my dear friends, so with respect to the environment perspective, it is very, very bad to um, practice the non-vegetarian food in your daily life. So it means so much amount of natural resources are spent for this. Okay. And then with respect to the um, environmental perspective, so there's much more uh, damage is happening. So because what happened, there's a high amount of methane gas will be emanated from the all the slaughterhouses. Okay, and what will happen is about one lakh more than you know in the, from the I said in the India itself we have about thirty nine thousand of kalebas. So kabelas, kabelas are there. That is slaughterhouses are there yeah, spreading entire India. Especially Kerala is having highest amount of kabelas. That is slaughterhouses. That is why you try to see in in Kerala what happens. There are many many suicides happens. The amount of the as per the statistics, the high amount of suicides are happening in the Kerala, especially. What is the reason? Because they get the see what happened. I told you, food is your mind. Try to understand. As you sow, so you reap. What about your thoughts? What kind of violent thoughts you will get? What kind of disastrous thoughts? What kind of your whatever what kind of behavior you will get when you eat non-vegetarian food? It is a this is actually a kruratva. That means it's a cruel food. Okay, it is a brutahara. Raksha Sahara and Brutahara, Raksha Sahara and Kruratva. That is cruel food, my dear friends. So when you eat that kind of food, the same kind of mind will be built. Try to understand. So what is important for the physical body? Sound body, sound mind, my dear friends. Then only you can get into the spiritual practice. I will try to tell you one thing. So the minimum eligibility for entering into the kingdom of the God, that is the portals of the kingdom of the God, if you want to enter inside the inside it, at least to enter the door, you want to touch the door of this uh, kingdom of the God, the minimum eligibility is vegetarianism. Try to understand. Okay. With respect, with respect to compassion, with respect to many factors, I told you spiritual perspective, physical perspective, environment perspective, in all the perspectives, this is not the food at all. One must practice. You must set it away all these kind of practices from your life. So as I'm explaining you, what happens is when you eat the non-vegetarian food, the cruel food, your mind also become cruel. You resort to the violent, violent behavior, the violent practices in your own life. It, um, it impacts negatively the other people surrounding you in your own family and surrounding you what happens a lot of anger will come a lot of jealousy will be there all these says arishad vargas will be predominant 
within you because of this particular non vegetarian food because it is a aggressive food my dear friends this is an aggressive food this is not a non aggressive food at all it is not a satvik ahara it is a aggressive food that is why mamsa ahara must be avoided so that, that is what we observed in the kerala they many of the suicides are happening because of the they consume more amount of non vegetarian food they have higher number of slot houses my dear friends see one of the scientists says if you open the you no know, if you put the glass glass floor, glass walls for your uh, any slot house no then nobody will eat that uh, meat i will tell you the truth is that because that is a kind of you know violence they do inside the slot house they kill the animal drag that you know they kill it forcefully and the animals will be crying the animals will be resorting to escape but still they won't leave they have a suitable machinery and they have a lot of technology to kill the animal in a so simple way and you know it gives the of course i told you when when you are killing the animal in so in a disastrous way what happens it generates lot of poisonous chemicals inside the body that you are eating again and it gives lot of the highest amount of illness obviously right so that is why my dear friends so in entire this is so called our sanatana bharat should not have this kind of uh, you know the violence because our great mahatmas the great saints of india they have advocated this uh, the especially the satvik ahara in in all the great script scriptures bhagavad gita if you read bhagavad gita you can understand in many instances about the shakahara that's the only the food that's the only the kind of uh, the food food practice you must uh, uh, resort to it so that you know you grow spiritually your spiritual growth will be not tampered my dear friends so that is why so these are the few facts which i am putting in front of you in order to justify why one must be a vegetarian in order to be a great sadhaka in the path of spirituality to gain the spiritual wisdom to become a great yogi to become a great master in your own life the master of your life and become a great master in the in the field of spirituality my dear friends so is all about vegetarian vegetarianism i i try to explain you okay friends next thanks next goes to swadhyaya so let's dis discuss about swadhyaya what is swadhyaya swadhyaya means reading right spiritual books right so why do you need to read spiritual books i will tell you so uh, there is a one statement called dhyana dinda gnana gnana dinda mukti okay so that means if you get if you do more meditation you will get right wisdom and if you get right wisdom you get mukti moksha liberation enlightenment self realization all this will happen my dear friends so it means that so there is a lot of importance gnanani gnanani dagdha karmani gnanani dagdha karmani that means all your karmas will be burnt if you get right wisdom okay how you get the right wisdom there are few sources one one the important source is meditation of course you get lot of uh, cosmic energy and also you get lot of the first hand first first hand experience of the wisdom spiritual wisdom how do you gain it when you understand yourself by doing a astral travel by by opening your third eye that means the your agnya chakra gets activated what will happen you can really communicate with the great masters you can communicate you can gain the wisdom from the higher worlds so when it happens what will happen obviously you get the first hand wisdom that is the the finest wisdom of spirituality you will receive through your own practice of meditation so that means you become a vigyani the gnana becomes vigyana so when the what is the knowledge knowledge is a gnana and vigyana is a wisdom the wisdom is called vigyana that means once you become a vigyani so then what will happen you know the true essence of the life the truth of the life you better understood you completely understood okay so that's why friends so the right sources for gaining the wisdom spiritual wisdom is one is through meditation the second one is through reading right spiritual books what are the right spiritual books so the books which are written by all the great saints the great realized souls on this earth planet not only sanatana dharma not only uh, from the ancient india there are many many western masters who also written the wonderful books for us you know so try to understand so the first and foremost week of the book which he, which is used uh, which is uh, which is read by our founder pramarshi patri ji so at the time of uh, before the time of enlightenment that is you forever that is so no death that is you forever means what no death 
so that is the one book you forever by lob sham tuesday lob sham rampa okay that is the the tibetan monk who has written the wonderful book my dear friends it describes the it describes about death and you know uh, death and uh, you forever means what so it it explains predominantly about your soul soul the soul and uh, how it uh, depart from this uh, physical world and the process of death and uh, all about all about the soul like uh, before death and after death the death after experience death after life experiences and uh, about all the soul journey he has described so nicely and uh, it's a great the great book one must read my dear friends please note it down that is you forever by tuesday lob sam rampa this is one of the wonderful book read by our guruji friends likewise there are many many books which are written by the great masters so let me recap let, let me put in front of you some of the books autobiography of a yogi which is written by so called yogananda paramahamsa okay so many of you might be knowing autobiography of a yogi written in friends it is written in english and got translated into all the languages which is available kannada english telugu marathi gujarati so this book is very much available through your amazon also you can order this but this is one of the wonderful book if anybody want to enter into the spirituality you want to deepen your practice you want to deepen your the trust and you know the belief onto the on in the spirituality in the field of spirituality please read this book it is most suggest, highly suggested book that is autobiography of yogi it may the friends this is written by yogananda paramahamsa he is the great spiritual scientist i can say he is a great spiritual monk he went to the foreign country he has uh, spread our sanatan dharma our spiritual wisdom to the entire the foreign countries that means prachyate desha okay he went and he has educated them so and also he is in the lineage of mata baba ji lahari bahasya ikteshwar giri and yogananda paramahamsa this is very much described in this book and you can understand all these masters all these four masters great experiences so in the in the bharat in the in our uh, ancient bharat so the great great master living master till is till also uh, now also is living he is living master we, we all call it as we all believe the great master mahatar baba ji is still living with his own light body he is he, he is a chiranjeevi so he doesn't he did not have any death okay he is, he is living as a chiranjeevi still uh, till now also so that is why to know about him to know about lari masya to know about all these four great masters please read this book okay that is autobiography yogi and also the other book is living with himalayan masters written by swami rama okay swami rama is also a great enlightened soul uh, in a himalayan yogi my friends it is an himalayan yogi please read this book at any cost okay so purchase it you can purchase online from amazon also and read this book it's also one of the wonderful book friends likewise so you can read all the osho books osho rajanis is a bhagwan osho rajanis is a great the the great spiritual scientist and the great yogi so he is realized an enlightened soul of uh, india please read all his books without fail all osho rajanis books then goes to the theosophical society books my dear friends i told you 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 have to read this uh, theosophical books which are very 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 important in order to explain you all about the soul and all the astral experiences which are written by anbisen ledbeter and uh, uh, kalnal uh, there are many many authors many many scientists are there spiritual scientists are there the part of theosophical society you can read all of them about third eye about astral body about all the seven bodies right so likewise if you see telepathy regarding all this spiritual the spiritual wisdom they have written wonderful books please read them okay then goes to the all the new age scientists new age spiritual scientists who are the western masters who are the western masters carlos castrodona and led uh, carlos castrodona is one of the great scientists you can read all of his books my dear friends deepak chopra he has got he has written many many of the uh, modern spiritual books he has written please read all of them and also uh, there are other uh, the great scientist um, richard bach richard bach is one of the scientist raymond moody 
you know raymond moody dr raymond moody has written one book very nice book life after death my dear friends he has he has researched a lot he has researched a lot about life, life after death so it is about reincarnation okay he has read a wonderful book please read that okay that's also a very highly suggested book okay so likewise if you uh, i will try to forward the some more uh, the references of the, all the spiritual great spiritual books in the whatsapp group please read them whatever possible for you whatever the first and foremost book which i suggested you you forever okay then autobiography yogi the living with himalayan masters so these are the primary books which you can read of course i'll be sending some of the soft copies also i'll be sending whatever the pdfs i have the uh, the great spiritual books i'll be keep forwarding in your whatsapp group read them directly okay you don't need to purchase them again so the similarly you can also purchase some of these books which i suggested in online i can purchase you can definitely read them which is going to be much much helpful so what happens by reading all the spiritual books all the swadhyaya swadhyaya is going to deepen your practice sadhya swadhyaya is going to give you the lot of first hand experience of great masters friends when you are doing sadhana when you are doing meditation you get lot of questionnaire the lot of doubts okay so all this will be clarified the living masters in the classes like this in the sessions like this and also what happens is if you read about first for the particular master you will know entire about his life in his own life what are the various experiences he got what are the various uh, instances where are, what are the various situations he has gone through in his own practice right and what are the miracles he has done what are the great kind of healing he has performed for the people if you study let's suppose you are studying the uh, uh, like sai baba satcharitra what you will understand many of his uh, teachings many of his experiences you read them right same way friends another thing is you try to read jesus christ teachings also i'll be teaching uh, did jesus christ teaching separately in one of the class the great teachings of jesus christ right so i'll i'll be teaching them that time you can understand more about it right so friends likewise so you must uh, spend good amount of time the reading of books and then goes to the next one is sajjana sangatya so there is a sajjana sangatya we need to understand so that's the third topic of our today sajjana sangatya what is sajjana sangatya my dear friends you are spending your time with the sajjana sajjana means what the people who are realized the masters who are already got realized the great masters maybe living masters and uh, what over non living masters of course you can spend more time in meditation connect with them you can take the wisdom from them also but in on the when you are physical in the living masters over is available, over is around you they are all called sajjana sajjana means what the truth who have realized the truth who have already visited the truth right they experience the truth what is the truth truth is only one thing you are the soul you are not the human. you are not this physical body you are the soul who has got this experience who has got enlightened so with them you are spending your time that is called sajjana sangatya it means attend the classes read their uh, attend the classes hear them hear their videos audios whatever it is there and directly meet them discuss with them clarify with them and spend some time in the aura of in the in the field of they in the vicinity of them so all this you are doing means it's called sajjan sangatya so what is the advantage of it so what will happen is when you are you are also seeking the truth you are in the path of spirituality you are seeking seeking the truth friends try to understand there is one thing is truth is different there is something called some some people says like you know uh, we call it as anything energy anything is a nitya satya satya nitya whichever is nitya nitya means what ever existing ever lasting that is soul your soul is ever lasting your soul your soul is eternal that is called that is the satya if somebody knows that satya the somebody know the truth those are those are called as sajjana so that means sajjana sangatya you must be doing all the time try to remember this point and definitely your progress in spirituality will be hasten that means faster it becomes so faster and you can you can travel you can spirit your you can make your travel you can make your spiritual journey so smooth and you know the faster and uh, so so brilliant uh, highly highly vibrant okay so that's why this sajra sangatya must be continued part of your life 
all the time, whenever it's possible, whenever it is accessible to, to you, my dear friends. So let's go to the meditation. Let's not delay anymore. So these are the three topics we would like to cover today. We have covered, I think it is a vast subject. There are vast subjects. There are much more to talk about. One, one of the great statement, I'll end this Sajana Sangati with one of the great statement I'm remembering. So that is by Adi Shankaracharya. What is the statement? Trijagati Sajana Sangati Reka Bhavati Bhavarnada Tarane Nauka. That means this the great Bhava Sagara of life. Though what I'll repeat that again. Trijagati Sajana Sangati Reka Bhavati Bhavarnava Tarane Nauka. That is that is quoted by Adi Shankaracharya. That means in the three lokas, only one only one technique to come out of this Bhava Sagara, to, to come out of this, this life, physical life. In all three lokas, this loka, next loka, next loka, who loka, bhor loka, swar loka. So that means physical world. Then there is the astral world, there is a the causal world. Everywhere there is only one thing that is Sajjana Sangatya. Through Sajjana Sangatya, you can come out of this uh, physical life, you can get enlightened. That is the only the way uh, as per the Adi Shankaracharya. Friends, let's start the meditation. Or already know the meditation, go into the meditation, start sitting. Take the posture of meditation. Sukhasana. Stira Sukhasana. Take, say, take the support of wall if you need, if you have any back pain. If you are comfortable, sit on the floor with a mat. Otherwise, on the bed, take a support of wall. Do not touch your the back side of the head to the wall. Do not touch your back of the head. Do not lean on the head, lean on the wall. Your head must not lean on the wall. Sit comfortably. Any newcomers, observe me. I will give you the technique. You have to cross fingers, fingers into fingers. And you have to cross the legs. Cross the legs. Cross fingers into fingers. Keep on the thighs. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Throat meditation, you must be closing your eyes. Do not open the eyes until I say, okay. Sit comfortably. Sukha asana, sthira sukha asana. This is called sthira sukha asana. Set down, set down the, all the lights surrounding you. Your lights must be switched off. Your room must be a little darker. It should be good environment. Close your door. Do not get any outside disturbance while practicing meditation. Sit comfortably, relax. Whenever you are sitting on the floor, you can take the posture of while eating food. Whatever the posture you take when you are sitting on the floor, same posture is enough. No need of Padmasana. Do not take any Padmasana. Now you are sitting with the closed eyes, comfortably, peaceful. Now start observing your natural breath. Start observing your natural breath. Do not take the breath forcefully. Only natural breath. Keep observing at the nose tip. At your nose tip, keep observing it. If you get any thoughts, you have to cut the thoughts right away. Do not travel with any other thought. You don't need any thoughts during meditation. Be with your natural breath. Just observe your natural breath at the nose tip. Just keep observing. It's flowing in, flowing out. Whatever naturally happening, you become an observer of that. Become the observer of the natural breath. Relax your head. No more tension in the head. No more thoughts in the mind. Relax your head. Relax your eyes. Relax your neck. Release all the tension. No tension in the neck. Neck area. Relax your chest. Relax your back. 
release all the tension let the tension go away no more stress no more strain relax your abdomen you are getting relaxed abdomen relax all your relax the buttocks no more tension relax 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 all your thighs please release the tension relax your legs relax your feet now you are fully relaxed complete body is relaxed be with your breath focus on the breath breath is your life breath is everything for you be with your breath breath is your guru is your master it will give the enlightenment breath gives the enlightenment moksha be with your breath natural breath we will also put the mild music do not go with the music be with your breath only let the music does its own job on your body music also provide the great amount of healing even when you are practicing your meditation you are practicing the meditation by only observing the breath the music goes in a background it also does lot of healing in your body
last two minutes, final two minutes of meditation. Last 30 seconds, final 30 seconds. Last 10 seconds, final 10 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Place both your hands on your eyes for five more seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Slowly open your eyes. Slowly take away your hands. Yes, friends. So, wonderful meditation and wonderful topic we have discussed today about uh, vegetarianism and the Swadhyaya Sajina Sangatya. Friends, let's understand part of holistic lifestyle. I would like to discuss you the details about, educate you about the fruits and vegetables. Why we eat fruits and vegetables? The only one reason you should always remember to get the nutrients required by the body. What are the nutrients? Basically, vitamins, minerals, to get all this. As well, one of the most important reason, one of the most important reason, try to understand. Okay. One of the most important reason one must eat fruits and vegetables is to ink to get more of a, more of a positive bacteria are you called probiotic probiotic we can say microorganism within your that within your gut 
ओके दट मीन विथ युवर जीर्णाशया जीर्ण जीर्ण व्यवस्था दट इज युवर डयसी सिस्टम शुड हव मोर आफ प्रयोबेटिक दट इज यू शुड हव दि मोर आफ मैक्रो आर्गानिज वाट यू कॉल इट एज ए मैक्रो बैक्टीरिया सो टू डेवलप मोर आफ मैक्रो बैक्टीरिया बिकॉज इट्स ए फ्रेश फुड ट्राइ टू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एनी फ्रेश फुड दट मीन फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल विल गिव यू the wonderful bacteria the micro bacteria micro organism will be prevalent more more in the quantity within your gut so that you know you will have highest amount of bodily immunity so that many of the diseases will be prevented the prevention is the prevention is better than cure we always say prevention is better than cure that is why to achieve the highest amount of micro organism the probiotic within your gut within your digestive system one must eat more amount of vegetables and fruits so of course along with that there are many many minerals many vitamins c vitamin b b12 will not come the other other all of the b vitamins everything will come b vitamin c vitamin e vitamin all these things will come through your eating of many of the fruits different fruits will offer different amount of vitamins and minerals okay friends At the same time try to remember one thing is when you are eating any of the vegetables for example you are eating the uh, so called you know uh, uh, you can say like uh, you are eating the uh, uh, you can say potatoes for example which are growing in the ground for example so you are eating the vegetables which are growing in the ground eat only that one that particular kind if you suppose you are eating the snake gourd or red gourd whatever the uh, eating you are eating the some of the vegetables which are growing on the top of the ground or you are eating eating the spinaches right so whatever you eat eat only one type in one day do not mix all this for example i am eating palak i am also eating the, the other uh, spinach the same day one must not eat should not eat uh, same thing uh, on the same day same day two of the same category you do not eat always try to select one from each category one is growing on the top of the ground one is growing under the ground one is another thing is spinach so all these different kinds of vegetables you try to mix it not to eat same kind of vegetable on the same day that doesn't give because what what happens is they will have all the same kind of nutrients they they will not give different nutrients for your body try to understand this at the same time when you are eating let's say you are eating uh, um, you know the uh, potato then you are eating one uh, spinach then you are eating one snake gourd so that's good good combination okay all we say like you know uh, different colors right different colors of vegetables suppose you are eating beetroot one day one, next day you can eat onion sorry uh, the potato potato one day and uh, beetroot another day that is always better not like beetroot potato on the same day not required because they try to supply they will have almost like a same kind of nutrients they supply the same kind of nutrients to your physical body so that is why we try to mix all these different categories at the same time i will tell you uh, a very very important thing i would like to tell you see all these vegetables and fruits they allow 90% of water 90% of water that means how much nutrients you will get that means i need to if i want to get a good amount of uh, vitamin uh, let's say vitamin c i need to eat the huge amount of quantity in kgs so i need to eat so that is why the same kind of nutrients are also available in the millets so what you need to do so if you make a good uh, sabji with one good uh, vegetable and as well as uh, spinach whatever it is mix with the siridhanya that means your millets so try to add millets millets and uh, add this sabji or whatever you make uh, spinach and all this thing the curry you take no vegetable curry so add with the your siridhanya that is millets then what will happen your nutrient the more amount of nutrients will be conveyed to your body consumed by your body so that is the more uh, useful thing instead of uh, you know consuming if you want to consume you have to consume the huge amount of like 1 kg of vegetable curry you have to eat to get a more amount of nutrients which you are eating small amount of millets you are adding to it that is why i suggest mix the millets as well as this uh, uh, vegetable curry or spinach or whatever you eat mix with them then what will happen so your amount amount of nutrients conveyed to your body will be much higher 
So this is one of the way to uh, eat your food, my dear friends. So that is why whatever which is fresh in nature, and even vegetables, all these things, do not uh, you know put into the fridge, refrigerator, and eat it. What will happen? They lose their actual nutrients. Okay, they they have chlorophyll inside your inside the uh, the leaves and inside the you know all these uh, so called natural fruits. What will happen? The chlorophyll will be there. It will be lost by storing in the refrigerator. I told you the alternative system to the storing of these vegetables is use the pyramid. Use the pyramid of two by two pyramid within your house. Under that, you store these uh, vegetables, fruits, whatever you wanted. Store under them. What will happen? So it will be fresh. You can eat more number of days instead of refrigerator. That the most the suitable alternative for your house, my dear friends. The at the same time, I also suggest the every every one of you try to use all your local vegetables, local fruits, my dear friends. Why? Because many of the people, you know, they try to say Australian apple. I really don't understand why you need apple apple from Australia. If possible, you can get from Kashmir, Simla, all these things. There are vegetable, there are there are apples available. Eat them. And also seasonal fruits is only important, my dear friends. Seasonal fruits, local fruits. For example, whatever you eat, Goa, uh, Goa, Goa fruit, you know, and uh, mango fruit, which is available within the vicinity of your area, eat them. That will give you the right kind of nutrients to you. And of course, your body immunity will be uh, increased. So that is the purpose of eating local food, eating local vegetables. So what happens is the other way to look, to look at it for this uh, thing is you will support the local farmers, basically. The local farmers also will be grown up financially. So they will not uh, get into the financial issues. That is why always go with the local food. My suggestion is go with the local food, local vegetables, local fruits, and of course, it because I say, and also you should use only eat only seasonal fruits, seasonal vegetables. Do not eat something like you know all the time apple. Some quotation they take like you know every day one apple, keep the doctor away. That is not correct. That's a that's a foreign statement. It's a Western statement. Don't believe in it. Do not trust this kind of things. Okay. The reason is. So what we need to do is we need to eat the locally available fruits, seasonal fruits. The two seasonal fruits is always important. Seasonal vegetables are always important. What will happen is if you are eating non-seasonal uh, fruits, what happens? They will be stored inside the cold storage. What happens? They use some chemicals to store them, not to not to damage the fruit. You know what happened? They use some wax, especially the you you observe the, the apple which comes from the foreign countries. They will have wax coating around it instead of because to avoid the damage of the fruit, what they do? They do all this. They import from long distances, my dear friends. Very long distances. Do not encourage all this thing. Only support your local farmers. Only eat local food. That's the only source of the rich nutrients for your the rich body, sound body. Sound health, my dear friends. So, friends, this, this is what about fruits and vegetables. Let's go to the, the other one, mudra therapy. Okay. So, as a part of mudra therapy, I would like to explain you today, nana mudra. Okay. Which is very, very, very useful for the all the sadhakas of spirituality. For spiritual spirituality, this nana mudra is highly essential. Friends, in the mudras, I explained you yesterday also. Uh, so much about mudras. You can refer my yesterday's video. Right. So, in mudras. This five, the fingers, you no, know, the ten fingers of your both hands together. So from this only you are going to practice. I told you already. It says what? Fire, air, akash, space. Then comes to prithvi, earth. This is this is jal. That is water. So these are the five elements for you. The five five elements are there in your five fingers, my dear friends. You are going to practice only with this, right? Right. So, what is the secret behind of secret behind the healing power of mudras? That I will give you the brief understanding. See what happens is from your fingers, from your feet, okay, from your uh, from your skin. What happens? Lot of electromagnetic energy keep going out of your body system. Okay, you are a energy system. You are an energy body. You are thinking that you are only flesh and bones and blood. No. You are the energy body. From you, always the electromagnetic energy keeps going out. The electromagnetic waves keeps going out. Especially from the fingers. It keeps 
going out from the fingers from the of course foot also from the fingers especially lot of energy keeps going okay so that is why what happens is when you are track another thing 80% of your energy also goes through the eyes that is why what we say the best way to practice any mudra is if you have time if you have opportunity close your eyes and practice close your eyes and practice that's most highly beneficial my dear friends anyway so whatever the energy which is conserved within you will be diverting to the healing of that particular arka okay right so now in any mudra you touch one finger to other finger that means one element to other element when you touch what happened the energy which is going leaking away from this let's say this middle finger going out that is connected to the thumb of this right tip of the thumb then what happened the energy which is diverted into your system Di diverted which, which inside your system in go it goes to the especially when it is diverted what happens is the energy get diverted inside you and it goes for healing a particular organ how the organ will be decided so there are connections from this finger to the your cerebral cerebral that means your brain within your brain there are some centers the centers are dedicated for all the organs every organ there are different centers in your body in your in your brain they control the functioning of monitoring of all the different organs from your brain what will happen is the energy get diverted it goes to the it, the signal goes that, that energy passed back or diverted into your system the it reaches to the brain so the brain diverts the same energy into the particular organ my dear friends because the for every organ there are different points all the organs are connected to the brain and the from brain in turn connected to the let's say this uh, thumb you know the thumb thumb looks like a it's actually head you just observe it this is begin nature begin say this itself is a head all the head points like you know related to head they are existing here on the top of the this uh, thumb there are many many points are terminated here likewise many of the organs are terminated here all the points connected to the different organs terminated here so when you divert the energy that energy goes to the healing of that particular organ that is how the healing happens in the mudra therapy try to understand okay let's consider one of the mudra today that is gnana mudra what is gnana mudra friends so and also the other thing i'll tell you in mudras also we have developmental mudras that means they are used for your general development for your general health what you say prevention is better than cure before you get any disease before you get any disease i'll tell you other thing any disease you get into your body which is generated almost like a six or seven months months back within your energy body within your etheric body my dear friends if you start doing meditation you can avoid all this uh, the upcoming diseases into your physical body all the uh, the blockages all the energy block created in your etheric body due to your past karmas and your current lifestyle they will get translated they will get manifested into your physical body after some months okay doing a day regular meditation doing this mudra practice doing a holistic lifestyle you can avoid all kind of diseases so that means that means prevention is better than cure that's what i want to tell you so as a as a part of prevention process i you want to be in general you you don't have even any disease no problem but you have some mudras you can use regularly those mudras are called preventive mudras or developmental mudras sustaining mudras life sustaining mudras you can, anybody can practice 10 minutes each mudra 10 minutes that's more than enough what are those mudras gnana mudra prithvi mudra apana mudra then comes to prana mudra dhyana mudra shunya vayu mudra these are six general mudras you can practice any time any place and 10 minutes for each mudra which will prevent all the kind of diseases for your physical body my dear friends so that is why there are other mudras which are therapeutic mudras whenever you get a disease you get diabetic uh, bp kidney issue liver issue liver psoriasis and uh, you know skin problem skin disorders any kind of disorder comes you have to use something called therapeutic mudras which will be explaining one one mudra in each day okay let's focus on gnana mudra today which is sustaining mudra which is also of course useful for therapeutic but at the same time any therapeutic mudra you wanted one mudra must be practiced followed by the prana mudra for 15 minutes then it becomes a therapeutic mudra even gnana mudra can be used for as a therapeutic mudra my dear friends friends here in this the gnana mudra is like this how to practice gnana mudra i will explain you okay so your thumb tip and your index finger 
okay the index finger this must be touched gently touched other three three fingers must be outward and straight so this is you can add, you can practice with a both the hands also right most of the times you, this mudra is called chin mudra this you you will be finding many times who is practicing meditation some people use it okay some of the methods of meditation they use this okay so that's why for spiritual practice progress spiritual purposes this mudra is more essential this is chin mudra this is gnana mudra right so what happens is at the tip of this thumb you have two glands the two glands connectivity is there in your brain there are two glands so the part of this uh, crown chakra there is a agna chakra you have pineal gland there is one more gland. behind the pineal gland there is a pituitary gland the pituitary pituitary gland pineal gland both are terminated here my dear friends if you are gently touching like this what happen both gets activated when the both gets activated what happen the wonderful results will happen in your body my dear friends so that is why this is the parmeshna mudra i explained you and also the effect of mudra also i explained you i will be explaining you now the benefits of this mudra okay keep noting down some of the benefits okay so this is the process gently touching okay and keep on the thighs and practice keep practicing closing eyes practicing is highly efficient okay so let us know some of the benefits okay right so this particular mudra empower your mind causing the positive effect on emotions and leading to the enlightenment stage okay and this this empowers the pituitary gland thereby the entire system of endocrinic system endocrine gland system will be activated in your body okay so that is why this is very highly useful to activate all your endocrine glands within your body my dear friends and uh, any kind of mental diseases like you know madness hysteria dullness of mind so lack of initiative loss of memory lethargy restlessness fear so phobia depression all will be cured with this uh, particular uh, mudra my dear friends and any kind of uh, violent cruel behavior so due to mental imbalance which would be overcome by this therapy uh, gnana mudra so what you have to do at this especially in this uh, mental imbalance and you know the kind of mad behavior violent behavior these pe children or these people so they can sit in the gnana mudra for 15 minutes 15 minutes one shot followed by 15 minutes prana mudra what is prana mudra see here prana mudra this is little finger in this uh, ring finger must be gently touched with your thumb tip of the thumb this is what this is the prana mudra you must practice this prana mudra 15 minutes after the gnana mudra for this kind of behavior i am telling you okay and especially for the students this gnana mudra is a boon is a gift by the nature so this improves memory develops concentration improve brain power mental development will be manifold it's so, a uh, highly beneficial for the students my dear friends and then comes to the any kind of a bad habits like addiction intoxication this will be overcome any drugs in intoxication all the kind of a alcoholic all this kind of uh, these things will be also gone okay and any kind of mentally retarded children especially i'm telling you which is highly highly helpful so when they sleep put a uh, you know this kind of mudra and uh, put a ban what happen all the mental retarded children they if you keep like this you say that to keep like this after some time they'll remove that's why put like this and put the band around it okay when they are sleeping especially so use that so this will improve their condition they come out of this mental retardation my dear friends so likewise any sleeplessness insomnia can be cured by practicing this meditation especially sleeplessness insomnia the disease can be cured by practicing as a therapeutic mudra this gnana mudra for 15 minutes in one shot number of times you can repeat and followed by 15 minutes of your prana mudra so that will give the highest amount of curing these are the few benefits of gnana mudra my dear friends so this is the so we are concluding the session so with the gnana mudra so today's session of holistic lifestyle so let's have some questions quick quick questions from the participants because already we are seven class yes yeah uh, sir i want to ask and uh, yeah. today your experience uh, for since me a uh, long time i had doubts about aham Brahm, brahmashmi this uh, yes. concept so you explain today so uh, what is the difference between soul and soul consciousness mm. and how is it related to this concept of aham brahmashmi mm -hmm. okay i i think i explained uh, in many of the classes so one thing you need to understand is the whole cosmos is a consciousness part of consciousness okay soul consciousness also the same 
the words are same there are there is no difference between soul consciousness consciousness basically the soul is soul is existing in the form of consciousness that's all the soul is existing in the form of consciousness in all the living beings in the entire cosmos okay that is one number one to answer your question so number two is when you say aham brahmasmi that means aham means are uh, my i am i i okay aham means i brahmasmi that is like i am the part of i am also the same as that brahma brahma that means brahmasmi that means whatever brahma padartha is there the entire cosmos the entire universe whatever brahma padartha is there i am that i am that means what your consciousness all other uh, things existing all other beings which are existing in this universe the cosmos is also part of the brahma padartha so it is a part of the brahma padartha you also that you are also belong to the same brahma padartha that's why this word is called aham brahmasmi to indicate that you are also that you, you are also that he is also that it is also that so that means everything is a one thing uh, everything is one there is no duality so this is a, only the unity there is a single one so there is no duality at all so that's called brahma padartha okay so that's why we call it as a brahma padartha and you are also part of the brahma padartha you are all you are you are actually that you are not even the part of that i don't use that word is also not correct word so you are the you are not part of that you are that you are that okay Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Hey, Amrish Pandya. Arun. Arun. So you can ask any questions and also from the today's topics, all the topics, whatever we covered. The video will be posted. So try to go through the video a number of times. to understand the basics of all these concepts great concepts ashok babu yes sir good morning good morning sir good morning good morning sir do today's uh, concepts was uh, excellent sir yes uh, thing is we need to adapt in the life sir day to day life we have to adapt yes then only comes the importance in uh, uh, spiritual uh, life sir yes correct so the, the vegetarianism uh, was uh, excellent uh, very briefly explained mm -hmm. uh, and uh, sajjana sangatya also very important because that positive you know yeah uh, sajjana in kannada they are saying yeah uh, sajjana sahavasa yajjanu savidante mm -hmm. सज्जनर our uh, guru patri ji through yeah. you you are correcting uh, all sajanas in one platform through online yes. it was uh, uh, we were very lucky or we were very grace yes uh, to have uh, this uh, kind of program sir and Definitely. also gnanam uh, mudra it was excellent because the people uh, you are averring and motivating uh, regarding gnanam uh, mudra the vegetarian what is uh, non vegetarian i am say these are all uh, very good uh, uh, real life into the uh, life sir uh, thank you so much sir i was uh, it uh, today was uh, excellent sir thank you sir right right see the uh, primary the primary goal of human life there are yeah. some primary principles of human life try to understand yes, sir. Yes, dharma artha kama moksha ha sir dharma artha kama moksha okay awesome. so awesome. what you this you need a physical body sound physical body sound mind then sound only mind. achieve this moksha yeah yeah oh, oh right sir okay. ah, so ah, sir. these are the primary goal for example everybody want to be happy healthy ah, you know, ah. all your desires must be fulfilled right ah, ah. So dharma means what happened righteousness yes it, sir ah. you must be righteousness towards the all other beings all other beings ah, ah, sir artha ah. means what you want to have a aishwarya ah sir You want to have financial freedom. Yes, sir. Yes, you are allowed to take it. You are allowed, allowed to do that. Allowed to experience. 
Yes, sir. So, karma means you have great desires to be fulfilled. Yes, of course. Yes. That's yes, possible. Sir. Very much possible. Yes, sir. And then finally, when all three things are there with you, then yes. you are looking for moksha. Moksha. Ha, ha. Right, you sir. want to get moksha out of this yes, life, yes, physical sir. life. So, yes, that means you want to get enlightened. Yes, sir. So to do all these things, to achieve all these things, what you need? Yes, you need sir. physical body, sound physical body, healthy yes. physical body, healthy yes, mind. Sir. Mind. Then you will get moksha. Otherwise, you will never, you will never get moksha. Moksha. True, sir. True, sir. Yes. So that is why this yes. body is the instrument for that. Yes, sir. Ah, uh -huh. Sariram idam kalu dharma sadhana. Ah, uh ha, -huh. uh -huh. super. Sariram uh -huh. idam kalu dharma sadhana. Kalu dharma sadhana. Ah, uh -huh. sir. Without this sadhanam, this the kalu dharma means kalu means this one. Uh -huh. So this uh, sariram, this sariram only. Sariram, sariram is the sadhana uh -huh. instrument. Sadhana. Is a sariram. You are you are not being this you know holistic and healthy. Then how do you achieve this uh, spiritual life? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. Yes, correct. Thank you, sir. Fine. Yes. Yes. Other people like uh, Lakshmi Devi. So we are going to close the session in another two minutes, friends. So anything is there, you can express. Yes, Sri Sumangala or Sumangla. Sir, Namaste, sir. Namaste, ma. How is your experience today? Sir. Sir, thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot, sir, for your wonderful information regarding this uh, you know, mm. vegetarian food and uh, Sir, uh, having a good people's uh, no, touch uh, every day and uh, having a good feelings uh, with all positive uh, no, uh, uh, the positivity within us so that we can spread uh, all positive information to others also. So anyway, thank you so much, sir. Uh, like in, in, uh, in between, there was some network issues for me today. Oh, so, okay. but still, I could able to uh, you know, understand many uh, concepts of you, which was yes. very, uh, really worthful, sir. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. We want to convert everybody into human being. We are not the human beings now. Yes, sir. You want to convert into convert everybody into human being. Yes, sir. That's what effort I'm doing. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank we you are so the, we much, are the, sir. We are the crew, crew for your being. wonderful uh, no, efforts. Yes. 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 Right. Correct, correct sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sila, Sila, Aura. Uh, sir? Yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, uh, you said about uh, Aham Brahmashmi. So, if we understand Aham Brahmashmi, then only then only the concept becomes clear, no, sir, that we will not have non-vegetarian food because mm -hmm. uh, the soul consciousness is everywhere. Yeah, so yeah. being a soul, how can we harm another soul? Yes, that's what you are eating God. You are, you are eating the God. Yes. Mm. Correct. That's absolutely correct. That is why there are many, many perspectives one must understand in order to be justified himself. The first thing is. Whenever you listen something, what will happen? You try to analyze. When you understand what happened, you try to implement. When you implement what happened, that becomes you. You become that. So that is what we say is go with all these concepts. Like, you know, you do, do sadhana, learn the, learn the wisdom. Because, you know, that's why I explained to you today the same concept I explained in all the three perspectives. Spiritual perspective, physical perspective, environmental perspective. I covered all the three perspectives. So, if anyone gets these perspectives clearly understood, what will happen? It uh, clears, it clarifies their inner about all the doubts, all the, the kind of misconceptions, what they, they occurred throughout their life, through the societal, societal uh, lifestyle and societal wisdom, societal knowledge. So, they'll be get clarified means once they get clarified, their mental blocks are removed, then he become that. That means he obviously get like you know you get manifested you get transformed automatically that will happen yes ma'am so that is why the wisdom is essential in all the perspectives so in the scriptures in the vedas we used to explain every, same thing again and again in different perspectives right 
the soul consciousness, Atman, Brahma Padartha. So all these are one of the same. But we try to explain in different perspectives in order to make everyone justified himself and clear their mental blocks. Then only he'll, he'll be transformed, he'll be manifested. Right? Yes, my God, you got clarified? Yes. Right. So, friends, we'll be closing the session. So, thank you, one, thank you, one and all, for joining this wonderful session. So, thank you. Namaste to all. We'll be meeting tomorrow with a wonderful concept in the great practice of our meditation. Thank you. Thank you very much.